Rainy day in St. Joseph, Missouri moved the Chiefs practice inside today. Now it opened to the public and a little rain's not going to stop us here at KCSN Update. We're going to keep you all up to date with what's going on with the Kansas City Chiefs. I'm Tucker Franklin. Today is Wednesday, August 3rd. This is KCSN Update brought to you by DraftKings. You are listening to KC Sports Network, the number one podcast network for today's Kansas City sports fans. With former players from your favorite teams, informed perspectives, and former insiders, this is the place for you. You can find us wherever you listen to podcasts or on our YouTube channel, all over social media, or our morning newsletter, KCSN Daily, dedicated to your Kansas City Chiefs. KC Sports Network is proudly presented by Emprise Bank, your partner in possible. Before we get any further, yes, Sky Moore did practice today, according to Matt McMullen of the Kansas City Chiefs. Glad to see him back out there on the field. And it was a busy day of press conferences for the Kansas City Chiefs. Yesterday, we had Nate Taylor on the show. If you haven't seen that, go watch it. It's going to be good pretty much all training camp long, all preseason long. So make sure you go watch BJ's conversation with Nate Taylor, the athletic. Today, we're going to be catching you up today with what was going on at the podium uh, on Tuesday and even on Wednesday. I'm going to kind of keep you keep you on track, keep you through there. We got Orlando Brown spoke to media for the first time. We're going to have Andy Reid, Dave Tobe, some specialists like Tommy Townsend. We're going to have Willie Gay, George Karloftis, and much more. So make sure you stay tuned. But before that, here's a word from our friends at DraftKings. Football fans, DraftKings changed the fantasy game forever in 2012, and now they're doing it again with Rainmakers Football, their first ever NFT fantasy game. It's a new shot to win millions in prizes, and it's the only NFT fantasy game licensed by the NFLPA. Playing Rainmakers Football is simple. Buy, sell, bid, and win player cards of the biggest names in the game through regular drops and auctions. Each week, craft your lineups of athletes from your NFT collection and rack up points for touchdowns, receptions, and more like you would in any daily fantasy football. The next generation of fantasy sports is almost here, so download that DraftKings Daily Fantasy app and sign up with the promo code KCSN. Click the Rainmaker style and opt in so you can be ready for the next drop. Play free for millions in prizes all football season long and build the ultimate NFT fantasy franchise with Rainmakers Football. That's promo code KCSN only at DraftKings. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com for details. All right, let's get into the press conferences. First, I think you got to start with Orlando Brown. First time he spoke to the media since his holdout. He was at back at camp on Tuesday. Wednesday, he practiced as well. Kind of, he's going through an acclimation period, so he's got to end practice a little early. Had some really good stuff from Orlando. Here's what he had to say. Yeah, I felt good. I felt good. Um, I was excited to get, get out there and get some live reps, man. Uh, you know, obviously, I've been doing a ton of stuff, training on my own and things like that, but uh, it felt good, man, to get out there with the guys. I missed a lot of ball up until this point, and, uh, you know, obviously, man, I missed the locker room. I missed the coaches, you know, everyone here in the building, and uh, I know how important these, this five-day stretch is to Coach Reed and, and everybody here at KC, man. So, you know, I, I just didn't, didn't feel right sitting at home, missing out on this. Uh, you know, this is something that, you know, I want to be a part of, man. You know, I was brought here to help win Super Bowls, and, uh, you know, this, this week is very important to our progression. You know, man, it's always hard. You know, I, I, like I said, Man, I, I pride myself on being a leader. I pride myself on being someone that wants to be here for his teammates and showing up every day, bringing the most positive energy that I can bring to the locker room and on the field, man. And uh, so it was, it was difficult to be a, be away from it uh, for so long. But, you know, the understanding was that, you know, I had to do what I had to do. Not at all. Not at all. You know, I want to be here. I want to be I want to finish my career here in Kansas City. And, uh, you know, I'm sure, you know, questions out there. But, uh, you know, to me, man, uh, the, with the contract situation, it just wasn't enough guarantees. And I want to be here for the rest of my career in Kansas City. And that's really important to me. Your vantage point, how did that process play out? Yeah, I don't want to get too detailed on that, but uh, very emotional, man. Uh, you know, I, I've spoke to, you know, pretty much a lot of people here in the front office and, and Coach Reed and everyone understands, man. I'm, you know, I love I love ball. You know, I, blo- I love blocking for Pat Mahomes. I love putting the Chiefs, you know, logo on my helmet, man. And uh, I really enjoy being here. Uh, so, you know, I know that, that time will tell and things will get taken care of with time, man. I just look forward to getting out there on the field this year. You know, ultimately, we, we visited with a few different agents, and uh, Mike, Mike uh, Portner was the best option for me that I personally felt like. Why, why was he the best option for you? Yeah, I mean, I just felt like he did a really good job uh, understanding what was needed. Uh, you know, we connected in a few different ways, man. You know, obviously his dad being an endocrinologist and, and my dad's uh, history with, with diabetes and my family and all that different stuff. So, man, we, we had a, we just basically developed a connection through that. And, uh, 
you know, man, I just feel like he, he presented me with the best opportunity. I was just my brothers, man, and, and uh, fortunately, I've been able to grow with them over the last year, uh, especially on the field and off the field. Uh, you know, man, I really, I really appreciate them, and I appreciate everyone in that locker room, man. Uh, you know, it's a driving force for me this offseason and every year, man. It's just I'm very thankful to be able to block for someone like that, play with other guys like Trav, all those men up front, uh, Coach Andy Heck, man, Coach Andy Reid, EB, I mean, all of them, man. I can just go on and on. Me and, me and Vish have talked, me and Coach Reed have spoken, um, you know, man, understanding this business is business, you know what I mean? And at the end of the day, uh, that part is behind us for now, man, we're moving forward. I just, like I said, man, I'm here to win Super Bowls, you know what I mean? At the end of the day, that's what I care about. I always feel like I got something to prove, you know what I mean? I was a third round pick, I had the worst combine in history. Um, <laughs> the list goes on and on, man. So the chip's always been really big. Uh, you know, what does this necessarily mean? Uh, I mean. I, I don't know if it's that much different from the past. You know what I mean? I always feel like I got a lot to prove. I'm progressing in almost every way, shape, and form and fashion, man. I want to be a better run blocker, a better pass blocker, a better leader, um, you know, allowing them to count on me when they need me most. Uh, you know, that was something that I feel like I struggled with a little bit last year, uh, not putting myself in the best position as games were close or on certain third downs or in close, or in close games against uh, certain talents. So that's something that I definitely want to improve on. Good. I feel great. Um, I spent a lot of time this summer uh, playing tennis down there in my Miami. Uh, I spend a lot of time swimming uh, twice a week and training at uh, Pete Marmorito's man performance system. So uh, my body feels great, um, man. I'm ready to go. Today was a great day. It's no hard feelings, awesome. period. You know what I mean? Like nothing, nothing like that. It, it's like I said. I appreciate everyone in this building, man. They give me an opportunity to play football at the highest level and to be a left tackle. So I've got no animosity towards anyone in the building. It's nothing like that. You know what I mean? Like I said before, man. Business is business, and I'm here to win Super Bowls. That's all I care about is winning football games. Oh, how important this stretch is to Coach Reed and. Uh, how important it is for especially for us up front starting in pads uh, all of those things man so you know I pride myself on being a team guy and and I want to be here you know to, to help us get through those through, through these days love the stuff Orlando had to say there now let's catch up with coach Reed to hear what happened at today's practice on Wednesday so uh, the blocking part is one-on-one -on -one blocking we give them some parameters that they've got to work within to get it done but um, it's it's great for the rushers the defense and it's great for the uh, backs and tight ends to work their angles a as they work into that block and, and, uh, and then their fundamentals. So um, it it's, it's, it's a productive period. Then we jump in and we do one-on-one -on -one pass from there. Again, give them parameters to work in and uh, in, in, a, in a clock. So we're not just gonna hang on to the ball all day till they get open. They've gotta do it within uh, time. So, uh, and again, that's good for both sides. Uh, again, now defense, working angles on that and offense trying to set things up according to the route that's called. Yeah, so um, Spags, he, he knows that position, like the back of his hand, he's coached that. Um, and, and, and then David has been doing it a long time. And then Donald's worked into that. He played safety, so he works in there. But David's working with those corners and spent a lot of time with them, as Spags is. And uh, um, he's, you can see he's got talent there. and. The, the kids are willing to work and I, I think doing a nice job competing. Uh, the, the draft picks that, that Brett has brought in here, I think are doing a nice job. Some of the free agent kids are, are, are showing up too. So it's, um, uh, you know, we've just got to keep going. It's, it's early yet, uh, but I, I love the way they're working. They powered through these last three days uh, with the heat and the length of the practices increasing every day. So. Um, I've, I've appreciated that work work ethic that they've brought here and 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 kind of bought into what we're doing. So that that's important. Yeah. Ben Scully, yeah, great guy. You know, fellow redhead, right? So um, you hate seeing that, but what a great career he had. I mean, I mean, you know, you watch his his career kind of ramp down to he was doing like three innings when he was uh, as old as he was there and. Um, and still that voice, you know, it's uh, and it was, you know, that's part of the childhood right there. I grew up right below the stadium and um, and Vince Scully was there from the get go. So, yeah, yeah Josh, is, Josh got a great attitude and he's working hard and um, and yeah, there's competition. So, I mean, they're all competing one day. He's working with the ones the next day, twos, three. I mean, he's just trying to get him as many reps we can and still look at the other guys, too. So it's a little bit of a juggling act, but um, uh, but he's doing a nice job. So yeah, working very hard. Thanks, as always, to Coach Reed for, for spending time with the media. You know, it's not his favorite thing to do, but he does it anyway. Uh, so we got a little bit of Coach Reed there. Now we get to get to talk to uh, 
Coach Reed's right-hand man, Dave Tobe, has a lot of decisions on his hands when it comes to the special teams. The special teams coach, Dave Tobe, here, he, he gets his guys on the rosters, believe me. When, when you see the roster construction, he has a lot of say in it. So here's what he had to say at the podium on Tuesday. That way, uh, we, we think we could do that with, with uh, Pacheco. Um, some of the other guys, you know, Cook is doing a good job as a cover guy. Um, Watson is a, uh, you know, he's not a rookie, but he's a guy uh, – you know, probably could take Kemp's, but, you know, we lost like six guys, you know, there's, you know, so on special teams, I lost like six, four phase players. So we got to replace them with, uh, with guys. Uh, Watson is a guy that can, might be able to take Kemp's spot in a lot of, lot of, lot of things. So, and he's doing well on offense, which is important. First of all, they get, they get established on offense or defense. Like they're a guy, like they're going to be a, somebody that's in the mix. So then, then you, you know, you're working drills and you can see that he's got a sense about geometry, blocking, um, you know, his, his knee bend and then his toughness, you could kind of, you kind of get a little bit of a sense for it, but you get more of that when you go in the games and get the, you know, full speed tackle and stuff like that. But you could kind of tell when a guy's got it, when he doesn't kick off returns. Yeah. Hardman right now, obviously. And then we're going to try to work McDuffie in and, and uh, sky. We need to get somebody else doing it because I mean, if McColl's getting a lot of reps as much as, as Tyreek did, we got to cut him back a little bit and, we really need to establish a couple more guys. Watts, Watts, you got, you know, other guys that can replace Watts is, um, uh, um, uh, I mean, it's slipping my mind right now, but Bush, Bush, yeah, Bush is, is a guy that's that's in there for that. And, um, you know, just uh, who, who else? I mean, Cook, I talked about, you know, I mean, it's, there's holes everywhere. So, I mean, it's going to be something that, it does, it is, it is. It's going to be a complete reset. Um, you know, it's, it's going to be tough. And really for us, it's, it's hard to tell what a guy can do in practice because we don't do anything live. It's really the games, you know, so the, the Bears game is going to be huge for us and the Washington game is obviously going to be huge for us. And, and, it, and we might be making decisions all the way up to the Green Bay game. So Fountain's a guy that we're going to rely on. You know, him and Gray, he, these are carryover guys. Like Gray, you know, he was a four-phase guy for us. So we're, we're counting on him to be a guy for sure. And he's, and he's doing outstanding. Gray. And then Fountain is a guy, you know, obviously he got hurt, you know, uh, early, you know, late. And then uh, we lost him. But he was he's a guy that played a lot of downs for us. So he's in the mix, too, as well. You know, I you know, I should have mentioned him as well as, as Watson. There's a battle. I mean, you know, there's a battle over there. And it's going to come down to special teams. You know, we, Carter is a guy, a linebacker that, you know, he's not a rookie. But uh, he's a guy that, that, you know, he might take Neiman's spot. You know, he might be in that role. You know, uh, Elijah Lee is doing outstanding. I mean, he's a guy, you know, he's not a rookie, but he's a veteran. He's got uh, veteran experience on special teams, counting on him. Uh, just you know, consistency. Uh, he's, he's, you know, he's done a good job. Those three guys, I, I'm fortunate that those guys are back, you know, because I don't have to really worry about those guys. I can spend more time with the core guys where I need to, where, where the, most of my time needs to be spent. So uh, I'm fortunate to have all those guys back. But Tommy, a little bit more consistency. Bucker, I'm not, I'm not going to mess with Bucker. He's doing well. Uh, his leg strength looks real good right now. Uh, he had three fit over 50 yesterday, had a real good day. He's 100%. Uh, so we just got to keep him going in the right direction. And then uh, uh, Winchester just keeps getting better every day, every year, I should say. Um, you know, he's a great cover guy, and, and he's a good leader for us. Good stuff from Coach Tobe, as always. If you're a guy on that bubble, you want your name called by Coach Tobe, especially during a press conference and media availability. Getting to hear Isaiah Pacheco, Noah Gray, Justin Watson, a guy that we're going to hear from here shortly. Uh, that's a good sign for those guys when roster cups come around in, in a few weeks that they, they could be sitting pretty on the roster. Now let's hear from Justin Watson, the guy who'd spent a couple years in Tampa Bay, now with the Kansas City Chiefs, made a couple great catches uh, the other day at training camp. Here's what he had to say to the media on Wednesday. Yeah, it was a, a challenging decision. You know, as you said, there's always been a history of great receivers here. And as a free agent in my position, you know, you want to go somewhere where there's a history of receivers, but there's also a spot for you on the team. And, uh, you know, it was really uh, our GM, Veach. He just uh, spoke to my agent and just gave him a lot of confidence that, hey, if you come here, we're going to give you a chance. And that's all I wanted was just to have a chance here. And I'm grateful the coaching staff has given me that so far. Absolutely. Yeah, I, uh, I mean, you never want to play Kansas City uh, when you're playing special teams. This is always a premier unit, and uh, for sure, you know, to play for Coach Tobe and, and just such an emphasis, you know, the assistant head coach is our special teams coordinator. Uh, you can feel that it's important. You know, it doesn't even need to be said. 
you can just tell by how much time we put into it and the effort we put into it. So I love that. It's always been something that's been important to me. Uh, and you can feel it with a lot of the other guys. So it's cool after practice. We already see a lot of guys working with each other, competing, knowing that those last couple spots on the roster are going to be decided by special teams. That's been said. awesome. You know, to you know, me, I signed as a you know, futures contract and to reach out to me and invite me in the offseason before we ever met uh, to come down there and work uh, meant a big deal. You know, it, it definitely just showed me that he wanted to get to know who I was and wanted to see what I had to do. So uh, those first couple of weeks were fun. Uh, when we were just going through meetings virtually and we were hanging out and, and working out. Uh, he's got a great setup down there in Texas. You know, we went back after OTAs, and, and hopefully that can be a thing going forward. It sounds like he called you out of the blue, and you just picked it up, and it was Pat. Yeah, I just had a text that, hey, man, it's uh, Patrick Mahomes. And uh, so I was, I was you, know, you don't get many of those texts uh, during the offseason. How long did you spend down there? Uh, I spent two weeks and then uh, another week after the OTAs. Yeah. yeah, I think, uh, man, I learned a lot of lessons from Tom, but, man, every single rep mattered so much. It didn't matter if we were working on a field in the off season or if it was training camp or in the game. That same focus and attention to detail carried over to every single one. And so working with Pat, you see so many of the same characteristics. You know, it's no surprise that two great quarterbacks are so similar in many ways and just his competitive competitiveness and mentality uh, and so, I, and, and it's cool seeing Pat continue to grow, continue to make new throws, hearing him talk through the offense. So he's a great leader. Um, I'm really thankful to be playing with a quarterback like Pat. Yeah, I think uh, that's one of the things the coaching staff said when we came in. We had all new receivers, and they were just going to let us show our abilities, and uh, there was no preconceived notions. And so, uh, so far, I've been kind of the guy that's doing a little bit of everything. You know, in the off-season program, I was working on the outside, catching a lot of deep balls. And then here, so far in training camp, still a little bit on the outside, but trying to see if I can work on the inside in the slot. So I just want to be the guy that if anyone needs a break, if anyone goes down, you know, shoelace comes untied, that they can point to me and say, 84, go in there and, and pick right up where they left off. Uh, you know, I, I think uh, Marquez Valdezcan is, is one that, for me, uh, he's been a great leader. You know, we came into the NFL the same year, uh, but, you know, just – He's from Tampa. I played the last four years in Tampa. We got to spend some time down there in the off season, and uh, you know, he's helped me become a better deep ball receiver. I think you know I caught a lot of those passes in the off season, and we have similar body types and just how he attacks routes. You know how he attacks leverage. I think one thing you're going to see from him this year is he's a lot more than just a deep ball receiver. He's been catching balls over the middle, uh, getting off press really well. So I think he's going to have a huge season this year. MBS. Oh my gosh, it's so different. You know, I there was. <laughs> There's uh, a play in the film room. I was on the backside, and I was like 50 yards downfield, and I started slowing down because most quarterbacks can't make that throw across the field. And they said, hey, keep accelerating. If you're open, he'll find you. And sure enough, we've hit a couple of those already. So it's, uh, it's different that it doesn't matter how deep you are. Uh, if you're open, he's going to find you, and, and that's the truth. Excited to see what Justin Watson can do for this team in 2022. Now, that really concludes the offensive portion of today's press conferences, of, of these past two days' press conferences, because now we're going to hit a string of defensive players. And one guy who's been pretty impressive, to me at least, when I've been standing out there at camp, George Karloftis took to the podium yesterday on Tuesday. Here's what he had to say to the media. It was a hot one today. Uh, you know, it's been really good. You know, getting, getting a lot better each and every day, that, that's all I could ask for. Well, it's not just Frank, really. It's the whole group. You know, they're trying to, to take me under their wing, you know, from from Frank and Chris to Mike and Turk, everybody in the group's just coming together as one, you know. Obviously, Frank helps me out after every practice, and Chris helps me out as his own way. And everyone really helps me out in their own way, you know, because they're, you know, we're trying to have the strongest group possible. So we're trying to have to bring everyone along. Give away the secrets. <laughs> but, uh, you know, just, just little, just little things about the game, man. Like the little, like the little vet intricacies that he knows, like stuff that was passed down to him from guys like, like Cliff Averill and Michael Bennett. He's passing that stuff on to me in order to help me be successful and this team be successful in order. How does the feeling change when it's the second day of pads? Absolutely. You know, first day of pads, you know, you got, you get all that excitement, you know, you're amped up, you're playing real football and all that stuff. But then you also get a lot really fatigued because you're really not used to it. You know, now you're used to it and you're you're going and now we're we're playing football now. You know, I'm so. not looking at oh I won this rep, oh I lost this rep. Like that's not 
what I'm here for. I'm here to just get better every single day in order to help this team win. So that's, that's what it's all about. I'm comfortable with it, you know, after OTAs and all that stuff, you know, I took the summer and really studied all that stuff just by myself and really just wanted to get, you know, make it, make it second nature, if you will. Uh, so that, that's all I was focusing on. And I'm getting more and more accustomed to it, learning more and more every day too, right? But it is a complicated scheme, but once you learn it, it, it becomes like second nature. It's not about the number, it's about the wins and losses. It's about playing in Arizona in February. So I wouldn't describe it as bull rushing. I, you know, for, for me, I'm a power rusher. You know, you see, you see guys around the league. You see the speed guys. You see the power guys. You, know, you, you see speed guys like, like a Von Miller. But if you really look at the game and study the game, you see that over half the guys' the sacks come from power. So just from that alone, you, know, you hear Von Miller talk he has 100-some sacks. Over 60 of them or 70 of them are from power. So why wouldn't you just hone in on that? So that's all I've been working on. My, my coach, my freshman year, Kevin Wolthausen at Purdue, uh, he told me speed to power. So I worked that every single day. That was the only move he taught me when I enrolled in spring ball. So I, I worked that almost every single day. And I based my whole game off of that. There's a whole bunch of them. You know, the league you know, right now has a, a lot of good pass rushers. You know, I think you know, someone that I have a really good relationship, a really close relationship with who just retired, Ryan Kerrigan, you know, that's my guy. So I go to him for advice, uh, you know, ask him things about the game. And really, I watched his film, you know, back from when he first got drafted and even his latter years, you know, just watching him. Because I think I, I play similarly to him, but there's, there's a bunch of guys. You know, I think I play like Khalil Mack. I think I play like a bunch of other guys. So, you know, trying to get little things from and little bits and pieces from every, every single person's film and just culminating that and using that for my style. Absolutely. I feel like I train like a pro. You know, that's what it was all about, you know, moving better. Uh, being more functionally strong and being able to apply that on the field. I could definitely feel that. Excited to see what George can do for this team in 2022. Man, he's looking good in camp already. Love to see these guys with the pads on. Another guy who has looked really good in camp and who's probably been my standout of camp so far, it's been Willie Gay Jr. Now, he wants, he's got big aspirations. He's got big goals. He wants to lead the linebacker room in interceptions. He's off to a good start already in training camp. He's got a pick six on Patrick Mahomes, had an interception in the end zone on Wednesday. Here's what he had to say to the media after practice on Wednesday. Uh, yeah, that, man, but I've been like that since since I started playing football. You know, um, once again, they call me the juice man for a reason. You know, so that's, that's what I, you know, try to do every day, to bring the energy, bring the, the juice, and just, and there's nothing that, that I do because people look at me. It's, it's just I have fun doing it and just being out there. So it's just part of part of who I am yeah you know I definitely feel like my role has increased you know like you say those two guys are big parts of this defense of this team so now man um, I feel like me and Nick both uh, we have bigger roles to fill and um, to lead this defense to lead this team on the, on the defensive side and just do what we need to do to, to, to make sure we are in position to to lead so give me a lot of confidence you know I got uh, goals to lead linebackers in the NFL and interceptions this year so when Pat throws me some, I know the other quarterbacks will because they're not as good as him. So, um, you know, every day, man, we're, we're growing and we're learning more and more. You can never be perfect, I feel. You know, that's how I uh, take it on. And, um, I mean, I'm good now, of course. Like, I feel like this is going to be a great year mentally for us all that we can execute our plays and run the scheme well. And so I feel like we're in a good spot. So we're going to do it, man. I know I can do it. I, you know, um, Coming out of college, man, I was a guy I feel like was drafted because of my coverage ability. And, man, like, I, I feel like I dropped four of them last year, you know, Cowboys, Broncos. You know, I feel a couple other teams, uh, I can say. And um, I feel like, man, if, you, if I make those opportunities and you know make the play, that's like five, six interceptions last year. So this year, man, I really can take it to the next level. I, feel, I know that for, for a fact, so I'm definitely going to do that. You know what? That's... That's a good question because Travis is he's different. You know, t tight ends don't run routes like Travis. He's he's patient, very slow routes, but they very efficient. So he he'll make a move on you, man, and ten seconds been passed by already, you know, so you think the play over and he hits you with a up and out or something, you know. But um it definitely makes you better for the guys that you play against every week because once again nobody runs routes like Travis, nobody can throw the ball like Pat, so we get better over there, man. First off, uh, Tien, man, Pacheco, he reminds me of my running back in college, Colin Hill. They so, he just got so much juice when he runs, man. I feel like he's a great addition to the room. And um, Clyde, you know, Jet, Rojo, all the guys over there, you know, I'm, I hope I ain't missing anyone. But, uh, 
it's just a great room, a room full of skilled backs that can spread you out in a pass game and, and run it up inside if they need to. So it's a great room. Really, man, it, it took me to year two, honestly, because I mean, I don't like looking back, but rookie year, I kind of gave up on it a little bit. I was just like, I'm just waiting my turn. So year two was when it really uh, you know, got going for me mentally and my confidence level went up a lot. So ever since then, man, now we're on the up and up. So. Well, that's a good question, man, because I, I remind myself of that every day that I did come from that point, you know, and um, I was the rookie one day that, that didn't know the playbook and was, you know, felt like I didn't belong here at times. And um, when I see the guys, you know, the undrafted guys struggling a little bit, I tell them, we're going to get it, you know, don't 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 cram your minds right before practice. Just, just stay focused, do your part, do what you need to do. You know, you're going to mess up. You can't be perfect in this game. You know, we got one of the most – you know, complex defenses in the league. So, you know, I tell them all the time, just take it one day at a time and, you know, we'll get it as, as we go along. So, Sticking with the defensive side of the ball, we had Tershawn Wharton talk to the media after Willie Gay did on Wednesday. Got a crowded room he's kind of competing for with those positions right there, but he's been playing really well going up against one-on-ones with Trey Smith, Joe Tooney, really holding his own. So here's what he had to say. I think Coach Cullen uh, want me to use my speed. You know, just letting me get upfield, you know, uh, watching Chris a lot. So he want us to go. It's kind of making me play faster than more of a read and react. I think Georgia, hard worker. You know, uh, got that, that rookie hard work to him. Like he going to mess up a thousand miles, but he just go. George go. He get off the ball and, uh, you know, showing that he he's supposed to be here. You know, as far as being a, a pass rusher, like I worked a lot on – getting my hands faster, uh, boxing, things of that nature, just to get them up. Um, talking to Chris and Frank, they was telling me some things they do in the off season. And that was one thing that Chris told me he did. And, you know, Chris got good hands. So I just did that and stuck to it. I'm definitely better uh, coming in from a small school. You know, you these guys was a little bit more polished than me, but now I feel like I belong. You know, it's more so, all right, every day I'm working to get better and I feel like I could compete with the top guys. Those inside guys, uh, Thune, Trey, and uh, Creed, those guys give you good looks. You know, some top guys in the league, and they're going to go all out every day. You know, they're not coming in just to get through practice. They come in at work. So, I mean, as far as my rookie year, that is definitely a, a leap. But, you know, the guys who was in my rookie year still give us good work. Alec Grady and all those guys still come in and work up workers, you know. Uh, Trey, he, uh, you know, that's that's just been something since we since his rookie year. You know, in the locker room, we talking like, oh uh, yeah, you got me today, but tomorrow we coming back at it. And uh, you know, it's just a friendly competition, but we know we're going to get each other better every day. I think that um, took the neck. They taking a leadership role. You know, they they leading us. Uh, Frank come out and he passionate about the game. So he um, come come out. He teaching, keeping the young guys at the means letting them know what's going on, watching film with them. And Chris doing the same, you know, they leaders on the field more so, you know, like they really taking that leadership role now. I think he's keeping it pretty much the same. We a thousand miles per hour, you know, he, we, we going. <laughs> like we got new guys in, but the culture of the Chiefs are still here. You know, we want to win. And that's what he coming in and having us do. All right, last and certainly not least, it is punter Tommy Townsend who spoke to the media on Tuesday talking about improving his leg swing, getting better in the punting game, went to all kinds of camps this summer, traveling all over the country, trying to get better. Here's what he had to say. It's probably the uh, the hardest uh, the hardest punt to practice. Um, you know, you're backed up. You feel like the stands are kind of like right, you know, right on your back. Um, and, you know, you got a lot of field to work with, and it's one of those situations where, you know, you need a good punt, and... Uh, and you just you just got to go out there and execute. So uh, so that's always fun to practice. There's always a, a lot of pressure in those situations. And um, Coach Tobe's great about that. You know, making practice, uh, trying to make practice harder than games. And, uh, and and I feel like we did that today. We got some really good work in there today. And uh, you know you know working towards. Um, and and you know I'm, I'm really ramping up. You know like I guess you could call it my my mental practice. Um, and, and working on the mental side like right now. Um, you know getting ready for preseason and. Um, 
you know, I'm, I'm just, yeah, I'm excited to get into preseason, knock the cobwebs off, and, you know, get back into, uh, get back into games. A lot of meditation. So, um, early in my career as a punter, I like to be very aggressive um, and have a very aggressive mindset. And, I, you know, I, I think that worked for me very well when I was young. But, you know, as I've, like, gotten a little bit older, I think it's best to, uh, you know, be in, like, a more relaxed mindset. Um, and because I feel like one of my tendencies is when I, when I don't hit a great punt, it's when I overswing and I try and, like, hit – hit too, uh, you know, like too strong of a punt. And, uh, you know, I sit very well around like my 75% uh, swing. And so, you know, that's something that uh, helps me with, you know, the mental side. If I'm, you know, really like trying to like slow down my mind, relax, and then that helps me carry it over to games, you know, just be more relaxed on the field. There's something I'm working on right now too, just something with my leg swing, um, just, uh, just working on pulling it straight through. Um, and uh, yeah, just help, helping my leg get to the ball a little bit quicker. And as you know, Kansas City, it's not easy with the uh, with the wind. It's one of the windiest places in the NFL. So um, you got to have a very short period of you know time between when you're releasing the ball and uh, between yeah releasing the ball and contact. So uh, so yeah, right now I'm just working on bringing my leg a little bit quicker through and uh, and hitting the ball just to try and uh, you know eliminate that that wind as much as possible. There's always a bit of like a learning curve, you know, when you got like new guys coming in. But but we've got so we've got a lot of talent, and I'm really excited to watch these new guys work. Um, I was super excited to get Chris Lamonts back, um, and uh, you, you know you know James James and Chris have been you know great staples in special teams. But uh, yeah, we got a lot of new guys and a lot of talent that I'm really excited to see, and uh, a lot of dogs on special teams. So uh, yeah, I just can't wait to get into preseason and watch these guys work. I think everyone's been grinding out here. You know, the O-line, D-line, they look good. It's hot outside. They've been grinding. They're just, they're built for tough. So, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, happy to see those guys out there working. That is going to do it for today's KCSN update. Hopefully we got you caught up with what's going on at Chiefs camp with the press conferences and everything. A lot going on. We just want to keep you up to date. That's the goal of KCSN update. We really appreciate you watching to this today's video, listening to wherever you get your podcast. And if you like what you're listening to, Make sure you like the video. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you subscribe to us wherever you listen to your podcast so you never miss an episode. We got all kinds of stuff coming up on KC Sports Summer. All kinds of content, whether you like Mizzou, whether you like Kansas or K-State. We got college side of the network. We got all kinds of Chiefs stuff as well. Don't worry. You're not going to be left out if you're a Chiefs fan. So make sure you're following us wherever you consume your content, and especially on Twitter, at KC Sports Network. Follow us there. We got highlights coming from training camp every day that they allow the public in there you know we can't can't do anything when they move it inside when when training camp gets moved inside can't really do a whole lot there but when they're outside and when they're practicing we're going to be there we're going to be bringing you the best and most up-to-date content from training camp if you like this video again make sure to hit that like button and subscribe so you never miss a video we'll be back tomorrow with another kcs and update until then have a good day Keith. chiefs kingdom